Today we're going to be diving into some specific champion combos that are really really powerful in solo and duo queue. Even if you aren't playing with a duo queue partner, just having these two champions together on your team is insanely strong. So make sure you flash on that like button, destroy that sub button, and let's jump right in. Our first champion combo is actually really flexible. They can be played in a bunch of different roles. It's Gragas and Yasuo. You could have Gragas top and Yasuo mid, or maybe Yasuo bot. Gragas jungle, Yasuo top, whatever it might be, these two champions are just insanely strong when played together. Gragas ultimate gives Yasuo the ability to ultimate for basically free. His E also has some knockup synergies too. Not to mention that their sheer combined damage is really difficult to overcome. Without magic resist armor and health, the enemy team is probably going to get one shot. Even if they don't get one shot though, Yasuo can make up for Gragas' lack of strength. Gragas' W is what allows him to get really tanky even without building tanky items because of the damage reduction. But sometimes it's not enough. Yasuo can make up for this with his Wind Wall. It nullifies all ranged damage that might be targeting the Gragas and the Yasuo and can extend their lives to the point where they get more ability rotations out and this allows them to fight even more effectively than they could without each other. Gragas and Yasuo are this double threat combo. Between Gragas's body slam, ulti, and Yasuo's Q knockup, they have a lot of different ways and long ranges to engage fights with. On top of that, they're not easy to kill, and they have a decent amount of CC and mobility. Both of them have some degree of tank shred and a way to absorb damage. Overall, they complement each other's strengths really well and are an amazing asset to have on your team. While we're talking about amazing assets, I highly recommend that you guys check out our website GameLeap.com. We have tons of videos there including more like this one. You can learn how to play champions, pick up generic skills, or learn how to play a particular lane. Whatever you need, there's a video there for you. And if there isn't, make sure you let us know. We are always looking to make new, better content with our challenger level creators. Our website will be there for you when you're looking to take your ranked play to the next level. Back to our best combos for rank. Next up is Galio and Jarvan. These two are a little less flexible as usually Galio is only played mid or maybe support and Jarvan is usually a jungler, although you technically could play him full AD mid or even top lane. Regardless, they are a very strong combo and synergize similarly to Gragas Yasuo. Jarvan ulti plus Galio ulti is insanely powerful and can lock down multiple members of the enemy team. Even before they hit level 6, their CC and damage combined is incredible. They both have knockups and Galio can easily chain his CC into Jarvan's and the other way around. These two when comboed together are just absolute gank machines. They have really high presence and Galio has a semi-global ultimate. On top of that, since they chain so well together, it's almost impossible to escape from ganks in the lane that they are both in. If you happen to have Galio mid and Jarvan jungle, you could even both go full damage and just look to one-shot entire enemy teams. The Galio ulti slam into his multi-man taunt and Q comboed with Jarvan's ultimate and EQ is insane damage and will leave even some tanks on low health. If you're looking for a champion combo to run lanes and run team fights 24-7, well, look no further than Galio Jarvan. Next up on our list is a little bit of a surprising pick. We're going to be talking about Nocturne and Shen. Now, Shen is a little bit limited in the sense that he can only really be played top and support. And Nocturne is almost always played jungle, however mid and top Nocturne are not that bad either. However, the ultimate combos from these two are absolutely hilarious and incredibly effective. Nocturne is almost always used to dive the backline. Combine this with Shen's ultimate to give him a large shield and additional CC and protection from auto attacks and it's one hell of a combo to overcome. This combo also encourages proactively using Shen's R to engage fights. And that is something that is very difficult to do because it can be easily anticipated by your opponents based on how the enemy team reacts to your team when you are playing the Shen and looking for that engage with your ultimate. If they notice that you drop it down early, well then they can just back up, and if you do it too late, it might not be enough. However, Nocturne gets to choose when he goes in, and he has a long 6 seconds of shutting down the enemy vision to choose when to go. This can easily hide a Shen ulti, and when you pop two people into the enemy backline and surprise them like that, they're probably not going to be able to react in a way that will allow them to live. Both Nocturne and Shen also have similar ultimate cooldowns, so you won't really have to worry about one of you being ready while the other one isn't. Usually they're going to overlap, and the time that it won't is really not that big of a deal. 10-15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds at most, depending on the cooldown reduction difference, isn't going to be the end of everything. 
now let's jump into our next combo, and this one might sound a little bit familiar. That's because it's going to be Zack Yasuo. Now, Zack Yasuo is essentially the same thing as Gragas Yasuo, just a little bit different in the fact that, you know, it's a Zack instead of a Gragas. However, the possibilities here are a little bit different. Gragas ulti is AoE, and it can be a little bit hard to choose which target you want to ulti as Yasuo, especially if a cask is getting thrown into multiple people. With Zack, however, it's different. His engage is much tighter than Gragas's. The barrel AoE is way bigger than Zack's E, and Zack's E is much more long range. Combine that with the fact that it's easily able to travel over sometimes multiple walls and it automatically combos into his own ultimate and well, Yasuo is just going to have a field day. In this case, you want to wait for the Zac to land the E, then follow up with the Yasuo ultimate while the enemy team is still clumped together and after the Yasuo ultimate is about to end, Zac can then use his R to chain them back into the air once more. At this point, you're looking at like something in the range of 5 seconds spent airborne, which is almost impossible to deal with. Most people can barely survive the Gragas Yasuo combo, let alone the Zac Yasuo combo where you're suspended for even longer. One of the key differences though is that Zack is much more of a tank than Gragas is. Usually Gragas builds full AP. Now that's not to say that he can't build tanky, but a tank Zack is generally better than a tank Gragas. This allows the combo to fill a different role, and Zack can play much more frontline than the Gragas can. If you need a big tank to soak some damage and get some fights going, well then Zack is probably going to be a better choice than Gragas with Yasuo. You might also be thinking that Zack is a little bit less flexible than Gragas too, but I've actually seen some Zack's played support and even top lane to great effect, so he's almost as flexible as Gragas. No real reason to worry about that here. Now we're going to be moving on to another combo, Kennen and Jarvan. Now this combo has existed for a long time, and it's pretty nasty. A lot of the time as Kennen, you want to be flanking the enemy team and getting angles on them in a team fight. That way you can run up to them, use your ulti, protobelt, all your abilities, and run your full combo over the key members of the enemy team. And Jarvan facilitates this incredibly well. His ultimate locking people down can cause them to flash out. In an ideal scenario, you engage in such a way that you force the enemy team to flash towards your cannon or just do nothing and die. But that's not all. Kennen can also do the same for Jarvan. In a case where Kennen is running at a couple members of the enemy team and the Jarvan isn't quite there yet, the Kennen can force them to blow cooldowns, and when they're down, the Jarvan may very well come in, flag drag, and ulti on top of them, and then they have nothing left to go where they need to go to escape. At that point, they're as good as dead anyways. Even before these two hit level 6, they are actually incredibly difficult to escape from. Kennen's stuns are relatively guaranteed, especially if they dash into you with E, and then from there, Jarvan can EQ, combo the CC, and by then, you're probably already dead. In this case, Jarvan is the more flexible one. Kennen is almost always played top, and technically he could be played mid, but it's not that great. Also, Jarvan could build full tank, full damage, or something in between that's more bruiserish. Whatever you end up doing though, you're going to fill a major role on your team. Next up on the list is Zillion Darius. Now let me ask you, have you ever been fighting against the Darius and you like barely kite him and kill him before he can kill you with his ulti or maybe right before he gets a Q swipe off to heal for a bunch of health? Well, imagine if that was basically impossible. That's what this combo does. Zillion's movement speed on Darius is incredibly powerful. Darius' main problem is that he doesn't have a lot of mobility and it's very difficult for him to get in and get out of fights. This is this kind of edges balance where he needs to be in the right place at the right time to catch the opponents off guard and start chaining ultimates and executing everybody. Zillion makes this super easy for him. The movement speed is incredibly powerful and he can chain movement speed himself and the Darius to keep themselves on the run or engaging fights. On top of that, Zillion's double stun can buy Darius time to get his Q off cooldown and heal for even more if he's in a dangerous situation. On top of all of this, Zillion can also ulti the Darius in case he gets chunked out super fast in order to prevent him from dying immediately. Then when he's about to respawn, Zillion's double bomb can zone or even CC long enough for Darius to get some damage off, maybe even kill somebody, or potentially heal a ton with his Q. There is just so much that these two can do together. The drawback is that this is the most limited combo that we spoke about. Darius is generally only played top lane, and Zillion can only really be played mid or support. 
If you happen to be playing Zillion support, then chances are that this kind of crutches on the Darius doing really well. It's difficult to make up for a lack of damage in this scenario because as a support you might just not have enough gold to be able to make up for what the Darius is lacking. However, mid lane Zillion is another story. A double bomb combo from a mid lane Zillion can easily send some members of the enemy team back to the fountain with a gray screen. And if you do happen to make it to late game as a Zillion support, well, your damage is also going to ramp up pretty high. For our last champion combo, we're going to go over what I consider to be the most difficult combo to execute that is on this list. We are going to take a look at Kiana Elise. Kiana Elise is very powerful. Both champions can set each other up. It is kind of limited in the sense that Kiana is almost always played mid lane and that Elise is almost always played jungle. However, Kiana can easily use her river cues to set up an Elise cocoon and vice versa. There's a lot of damage that they share and they can easily surprise their opponents. They have very high mobility and CC, so it's very easy to combo and run around the map without sacrificing a ton of resources. Another benefit of this combo is that they have different damage types. Elise is AP and Kiana is AD, and this makes it very difficult to itemize when both of you are getting ahead. Like I said earlier though, I consider this to be one of the harder combos to execute. This is because Elise is a pretty mechanically difficult champion and can very easily be played poorly. On top of that, Kiana and Elise are not particularly good at taking objectives on their own. Kiana mostly revolves around roaming and finding tower dives or skirmishes around the enemy jungle. If you happen to mess up a tower dive though, well you could be punished really really badly. And from there, you don't have that many tools to come back in the game. They mostly rely on their damage during their CC, and yes, Kiana has a very powerful ultimate, but if you don't have enough to back it up, then it's not going to be the end of the world for the enemy team. The one real saving grace of this combo is that Kiana ultimate. If it happens to get to the late game where Elder Dragons and Barons are starting to spawn and become a factor in the game, then finding a really large Kiana ultimate can be enough for your team to turn the game around. The stun and damage can be enough to change the pace of the game and completely flip it around in your favor. Since I'm mentioning game changers, you should absolutely check out our website gameleap.com. We can give you the edge that you need to make those game changing plays. To learn any of the champions that I mentioned in this video, make sure to go check it out. And if you're not interested in the champion specific guides, well, we have other stuff there too. Maybe you're looking for lane specific guides or just generic skills to improve on. It's up there for you. We are always looking to make more and better content with our challenger level creators. If you happen to see something that you want to see but isn't there on the website yet, make sure that you let us know. That way we can get to working on it right away. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. You've gained a secret plus one to your LP gains and MMR. As always, my name is Ace Windstorm, and I will see you guys later.